everyone, Charlie here. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining the live stream today. Uh, I want to do, in April, I want to do a weekly live stream uh, for multiple reasons. One, because uh, I really miss doing kind of semi-regular live streams. It was always fun to talk to with you guys and connect more directly. And two, doing a live stream, even though this one will be taken down and edited before being put back up tonight. Um, it sort of takes a little bit of the load off of doing uh, VEDA here for this month, VEDA, VEDA, whatever. Uh, but as some of you may know, I'm doing a video every day this month, as, as many, many people are. So that's the reason behind it. Uh, today, I just want to keep it light. I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I'm interested in uh, or have been interested in over the last uh, few months and sort of looking forward as far as Japanese pop culture goes. Today, we're going to focus mostly on anime and also on uh, music. I should apologize before we get into the topics, guys. I'm still a little sick, so if I randomly break out into like a coughing spate, uh, which will be edited out in the edited version of this, uh, I, I apologize. So, uh, yeah, <coughs> there's one right there. I do want to start uh, with uh, anime, uh, anime from winter 2017 that I that I got into, and then sort of looking ahead at some things I'm interested in uh, in, in the spring season because the spring season I think just is kicking off this week for the most part. So if there's anything you guys are interested in that I don't mention in this section of the stream, then uh, please be sure to uh, please be sure to let me know. And uh, if I know anything about it, of course, I would I would like to talk about it. Otherwise, I'll probably just go, hmm, yeah, and other really interesting responses like that. So uh, the anime that I really, really got into uh, after, uh, after being away from anime for, I don't know, six months, you know, I get really into it, and then I step away from it, and then I get really into it again. And the one that I got really into this time was uh, Demi-chan wa Katari-tai. I want to... Uh, uh, interviews with Monster Girls. Um, which the basic premise of it is really simple. It's a slice of life, and it's basically about these uh, these girls, these Demis, a uh, vampire, a Dullahan, and a ice woman who are trying to fit into like this process of integrating with so-called normal people, you know, uh, the masses, normal people going to going to a Japanese high school. Attack on Charlie. -na 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 -na. Indeed. Um, and what I really, really liked about this anime is that, I haven't finished it yet, but what I really have enjoyed about it is that it has shades of X-Men, right? Um, and I don't mean like... Uh, recent X-Men movies, I mean like classic comic X-Men, uh, 60s X-Men, things like that. The Demis are used as sort of like these analogs for, for real real world issues, basically anybody who who doesn't fit in with with a norm here, which is which is a really big thing here, of course. The, you know, I'm sure you've heard the idea before that the, the nail that stands out gets hammered down. Uh, Sensei is the boy of the year, there's no way anyone will have more willpower. Ah, uh, ma. Indeed, indeed. And also, I guess I really connected with it because, of course, I am I'm a foreigner here. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an outsider in many ways. I've been accepted in others, uh, but that's a topic for, for a different video, for a different stream. But, of course, I connected to it in that way. And um, there are some kind of creepy, like, old man, young girl interactions in this, which kind of always really put me off. And uh, it's a topic that El Kamado and I have talked about in a live stream before that sort of a uh, weird connection between young girls and older men that sometimes pops up and fan service and things like that. But for the most part, it's it's just a really feel-good kind of show, you know, and you really come to feel for the sort of situation that these uh, one, two, three, four girls, one is, one is a woman, the other three are high school girls, uh, what, the, what they deal with, just trying to fit in and get through their studies and, and you know, live a happy, healthy life and and such. Now, I really like slice of life anime because I don't know. I'm kind of over the shonen thing for the most part. I still watch them. I should point that out. Um, that's another thing I'm going to talk about. But uh, I really prefer this style of anime where it's just sort of it's calm. You know, it's more like drama or or comedy, dramedy. That's a word, right? People say that. So one of the comments we have here is talking about how the girls were depicted in kind of a more realistic way. Um, and how they dealt with their problems. Like, for example, one of them is a vampire, so she can't, um, 
she can't be exposed to to heat for too long that makes her sick and blah 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 and just sort of the way she tries to deal with it so she can at least be comfortable in the summertime and things like that it was really yeah, it was a really nice realistic approach or as much as it can be considering this, the, the material. So moving on, unless uh, you guys have anything else you would like to add uh, about uh, talking about uh, this anime. Interviews with Monster Girls. Uh, of course, want to have more of a conversation here, just don't want to just talk at you because otherwise I could just make a normal video, I suppose, out of this. Still on things like Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not a that's not a bad thing to uh, to be to be uh, still on, Ronan. It's a great show. So the next series uh, that I watched over this last season was I will know Exorcist, Blue Exorcist. Uh, God, what the hell's the rest of the name? Kyoto no Fujo Hen. Basically, this is your shonen thing, and this is what I was talking about. Blue Exorcist. Uh, is the shonen thing. Uh, this is my sort of turn it on when I want to shut off my brain thing. It has, you know, your typical premise. There's a teenage boy who has extraordinary powers, who's the only one who can save the world from impossible odds, that kind of thing. It, it has a little bit of difference in that the protagonist has to sort of fight back against expectation because he's the son of the devil. Or at least, At least I think that's one of the major conceits, right? I'm kind of forgetting. But... Yeah, he's a son of the devil, and he's like, might be one of the only people that can save the world. I'm behind on this one, too. But I enjoy it in sort of like a shut off my brain, okay, mindless action, kind of typical plot kind of thing, kind of way, you know. So is it worth the watch? I don't know. I would definitely recommend the last one I talked about, Interviews of Monster Girls, really worth your time. This one, if you want to put it on the background when you're studying Japanese or you just want to an anime to sit and watch while you're slurping your noodles or whatever, then then I say go for it. But not really one that I think you should look out for and be like, oh, yeah, this I'm really excited about this. But we have a fan of Blue Exorcist in the comments, and Ramen Quest is not such a fan. So if you guys feel like expanding upon why you like it or why you maybe not dislike it or couldn't get into it or whatever, that'd be cool to, to dive into that a little bit. Mm. So for those of you who are watching this later, what you won't be able to see in the comments here is that, so on the one hand, some of the reasons that people like this anime are because it's sort of, you see a lot of anime or fiction books in particular, where people are the sons and daughters of gods, but maybe not the child of the devil. And I'm trying to think about it. The only thing that I remember where somebody was the child of the devil was uh, Little Nicky, right? Adam Sandler movie. Uh, which maybe we should just not mention anymore on here. And then one of the criticisms of it is just knowing a lot about Christianity and Catholicism. There's some sort of historical or cultural aspects to to the series that don't really uh, don't really scan. I guess we've seen a lot of fiction where people have been uh, have been the devil or have been the villain trying to reform themselves, but maybe not someone who's been maybe not a lot of people trying to deal with the sins of the father so to speak right i am going to move on now to the last anime that i tried to watch this season and i apologize for anyone who is really into like sports anime but i have to say i have never ever been able to get into one and here's this long ass title minami kamakura koko joshi jiten shabu uh the south kamakura high school girls uh, cycling club, Jesus Christ! Yeah, this is this is one that starts out, you know, uh, people starting at a new school, uh, making new friends, and sort of, you know, finally getting to the point where you join the club and blah 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 and become something new. And then, see, my problem with sports anime, and I guess maybe the the same reason I don't really like sports movies, is there it always typically ends up the same. And I can't say whether or not this one did or not, because I didn't watch it all the way through. I got like through an episode and was like, okay, I can't do this. Two episodes, you know. And um, the thing is, like, either the team is going to rise to the occasion, which is like 90% of any sort of sports media. And it's about the heroism of being a sports player and, and rising to the occasion and rising to the challenge and blah, blah, blah. And I just, I don't find it compelling at all. And I was hoping this one would be different, but yeah 
Uh, people are mentioning Sword Art Online here. My thing with Sword Art Online, and I've talked about this before, is that Asuna, right? Season one of Sword Art Online, she's just this amazing, strong, interesting character, right? She's complex. She has agency, um, all these other things. And then Sword Art Season 2 hits, right? And there's basically like this weird thing where she's trapped in a cage and there's some... <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a really funny comment uh, battle happening between Granny and Hikipedia here. Uh, but, but you know, there's like this really weird sort of sexualization and sort of infantilization of Asuna, and they completely ruin her character, basically, from that point on. And so I really want to see the sort of online movie, uh, if only to see them do justice by that character. Um because it just it makes me so angry it makes me really like viscerally angry to think about what happens to her uh to that character so oh there's one thing you guys wanted me to talk about before i move on to the music section here and that was the the uh death note netflix adaptation i think yeah i'm i'm cautiously optimistic about it just because netflix at least the series that i've seen netflix has produced um are pretty good you know, I know that, uh, what was it, the most recent Marvel series that was released, Iron Fist, had mixed reviews, but as far as a lot of the other series I've seen, uh, as far as uh, the other Marvel series, uh, shit, what are, uh, House of Cards, things like that, a lot of the Netflix originals have been really, really good, and they're, they're really doing um, a lot of original content, so... I think it could be great. I like the idea of a place like Netflix doing it who's going to throw a lot of money into it and they care about production value. And yeah, I feel the same way about it uh, as Ramen Quest is saying she does really cautiously sort of, or excuse me, uh, giving it the benefit of the doubt. I really liked the anime. Uh, I only saw bits and pieces of the most recent drama because I thought it was kind of shit, the Japanese drama, I mean. And also... Uh, the movies that I saw too was just kind of like eh, about them, uh, which I know some people. I talked to a lot of people in Japan who actually really liked the Death Note movies, but they just weren't my thing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I do love that Willem Dafoe is the voice of Rook, but I'm kind of interested because, if I'm remembering correctly, in in the in the trailer that Netflix put out, isn't the name Kira K I R A still written? Isn't he still keeping that name? It looked like. Which I was like, okay, well, why? Why is he calling himself Kira? Uh, so that's a thing. Because if he's American or Canadian or whatever, it means killer in Japanese, right? It's the katakana version of killer. So I don't understand why. Other than to like make another connection to the original, uh, uh, the original property. So, ah, uh, that's right. Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack on Titan. Uh, the last thing here. I have to tell you that as much as I enjoyed the first season of Attack on Titan, I'm not really rushing to see season uh, episode one of season two. I don't to put it to put it in the most simplest but harsh terms. I I don't really care about Attack on Titan. Uh, it's one of those things that if I end up seeing it eventually, okay. But I think actually after the freaking dud of a live action movie that they put out of that too, I was just like, okay, well, enough of this. Let's move on to the music section here there, folks. Generally speaking, I really, I like some J-pop, right? Like, I guess Utada Hikaru qualifies as J-pop, although considering the general landscape of J-pop here, I don't know that I that I, that I I like the idea. I should watch how far I'm leaning over to in the camera, right? Because if I lean over here, this is not like, mm, how are you doing? Uh, let's just stay over here. Uh, but generally speaking, I kind of dislike... A lot of j-pop because it is so overproduced and it is just the most vapid shallow shit ever right and that's that's no different from from american pop it's all it's all generally the same same themes and stuff like that um which is why the first artist i want to talk about today is sort of it's kind of a sad thing right nakashima mika uh released uh a new album on the 22nd of march called tough and admittedly, before I, before I say what I want to say about it, 
Um, I haven't really sat down and given it a really, really thorough listen like I did when uh, Utada's Phantom came out uh, last September. But uh, both something I was afraid of when I listened to the single from the album, uh, Koyo Suru, was this sort of weird maybe change from this R&B, soulful, almost jazzy kind of thing that Nakashima Mika has had going on for the longest time to more of like a super produced, super poppy sound. And yeah, and that's kind of what I've come to find on the album in general so far. Um, but again, I haven't really listened to it deeply to look at the lyrics or to look at the instrument, the uh, instrumentation, for example, and things like that. So maybe for right now, that's just like, a first a first listen perspective on it but it seems like a change for her from the things that made her unique again that soulful r&b kind of sound to more of like a you know typical bullshit kind of thing that sort of doesn't make me too happy isn't that the quality that really draws people to pop culture though i'm not sure people are seeking much depth there um that's that's a fair point that's a fair point from ronan ushinawa um a lot of the reason why pop culture, not pop culture, pop music is so attractive is because, you know, a lot of it is first visual, right? Like particularly here, the idol culture and things like that. It's being able to look at pretty girls, handsome guys doing dance moves, whatever, and sort of the persona around them and things like that. And also these sort of simple love songs that everybody can relate to, right? Like Everybody can relate to wanting to get a girlfriend or wanting to get a boyfriend or have happy love or heartbreak and all these other things, right? But so that's fair. But at least for for me, I'm I'm definitely looking for something more. Um, and of course, all these opinions are just the ones that I hold. So now that said, I'm happy to say that I found some music last month that I'm really really into. In 2012, I sort of made a shift in the kind of music I listen to. Up until that point, I was listening to, I don't know, Dashboard Confessional? <laughs> Not just Dashboard, but Dashboard, Dave Matthews Band, a lot of things like that. So I like to think from 2012 on, my musical taste kind of got a lot better. Judge me if you will, uh, or not, whatever. But from 2012 onward, I really got into independent music, uh, uh, folk, folk music in particular, Americana. Uh, and things like that, and really got into sort of the, the musicality of different artists and instrumentation, and particularly uh, lyricism. And so coming over here, one of the things I really struggled with uh, as far as music was concerned was finding like Japanese artists that could fill the gap because it's really hard to find live live houses with that kind of artists, with those kind of artists here in Fukui, first of all. But also just sort of, I want to be able to connect to Japanese artists because I live here and I plan on living here. So I want to be able to talk about Japanese music with Japanese people, if that if that makes sense. Um, but it was really, really hard to find. I in like a Japanese pop, not pop, Japanese uh, folk uh, musician that I could that I could relate to in the same way that I could relate to the tallest man on earth or first aid kit or um Hooray for the riffraff, things like that. And uh, just through diving into the internet last month, I found a singer-songwriter, a Japanese folk musician by the name of Aoba Ichiko. And yeah, she's great, man. She's like, she writes her own music. Like I said, she's a singer-songwriter. And she has some substantive lyrics and really simple acoustic instrumentation. The album I picked up is called Zero, and it's in some ways it's really kind of like experimental folk uh, in her arrangements and some of the instruments that she does use and some of the uh, vocalization that she uses, but it's really, really good. So I really suggest that if you are into uh, Western folk music or if you're just looking for something different in Japanese music, um, yeah, it's really great for me. I listen to it uh, pretty constantly trying to sort of pick it apart and learn some new vocabulary and things like that. But just from like a, being able to sit and chill out and listen to something kind of album, this is, uh, 
this is it for me, you know. It's got none of the fluff of that AKB stuff, so. Ha, he rhymes. He rhymes. Ha, 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 ha. But, uh, yeah, that's sort of it for me as far as the things that I really want to talk about today, guys, on the live stream. So I want to open it up to you uh, if you want to talk about games or if you want to talk about music, if you want to talk about movies, anime, whatever. Um, yeah, put them put them in the comment section now, and I would like to talk with you about them as, as uh, intelligently as I can. And we did have one recommendation here again from Robin Quest in Love with a Ghost. It's not a Japanese group, but it's like an ASMR lo-fi mixed music, lots of background noise, and a super mellow beat. Really relaxing before your sleep slash coffee music. Um, cool, which, like I said, I'll definitely check that out. And Karano Kokoro by Anli. I'm not familiar with that myself. Subject blue, but so I can't give you anything that's similar to it necessarily, but it sounds pretty cool. Does Japan have a legit Spotify to discover new stuff, or is it all super pop? Um... So you can get Spotify here. The best thing to do, actually, is just to sort of dive into the web and look for independent. Uh, there are a lot of English sources that are interested in independent Japanese music, folk Japanese music, and even some pop music that's sort of off the beaten trail, right? If you want to get away from things like Johnny's, idol groups, and things like that, you can definitely find it. But also, just go on to iTunes if you can find a way into the iTunes Japanese store um and and um yeah you can just sort of play around with the preview function there and, and find what you find and there's also some uh there's also some uh people on youtube who cover like oricon charts if you want to find other artists that way and they do like the top 25 of oricon every week i think um there are there are different channels that do that that i don't follow anymore so i can't give you a name but they're really easy to find um, if you want to find more common common uh, pop pop groups and stuff like that. So as uh, someone who may be moving to Japan, should I be able to access all the websites I'm using, used to using, or are some country locked? This is a good question to answer. Uh, Spotify up until recently was country locked, um, and a lot of the content is still country locked. I would recommend if you want to be able to listen to the same music you're listening to in your home country that you get a Spotify premium, which I think is like $10 US per month. <clears throat> um, some content is definitely blocked. Like if I want to watch like a movie trailer or a, a trailer for a TV series I'm interested in that's produced in the States or the UK, sometimes it will be blocked over here. And Netflix is much different here than it is in, in uh, the US, for example. <sighs> yeah, Crunchyroll 2, as Raman Quest is pointing out, is country locked. But that said, there are sort of affordable, like $40 a year VPN services you can use, which I used for the first time, or for the first year that I was in Japan, until I just got used to not, um, A, either not needing subbed anime so much, or B, just not thinking it was worth the investment anymore. Now, I don't want to say uh, or promote certain sites that maybe allow for streaming, but there are plenty of ways that you can find uh, subbed quality sub anime if you if you want it um, while living here without having to use Crunchyroll. So, all right, guys. Now, I hate to end the stream earlier than I planned, but I can feel my my chest going, and as you can tell, I'm coughing a bit more. So I think I have to call it. But yeah, I just want to thank everybody for sticking around. We had some really nice numbers, which I'm surprised and, and elated to see for such an impromptu stream. So, uh, yeah, thanks, guys, for talking. Thank you for your suggestions of music and for anime and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, go check out those anime that I recommended. Check out some of the music I recommended if you want to. If you don't like it, if you do like it, be sure to let me know. Um, and if you guys want to sort of see what other people are saying about these uh, <laughs> these media, I'm sorry, somebody's saying they're the oldest person on the Internet. But if you want to see what other people think about the things that we talked about today, this stream will be taken down and then edited. I'm going to add some graphics and some thumbnails and stuff like that to it and put it back up later for today's Vita video. So uh, be sure to stop back and, and get into some conversation with people down in the comments. Uh, I did watch Nichijou Grani on your recommendation. Uh, Andrew Johnson, thank you.
And thanks, guys, as always, for watching. Be sure to like and share the video if you did, in fact, like it after it's re-uploaded. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. And I'll see you all very soon indeed. Now he awkwardly hits the stop broadcast button and waits for it to stop.